Howdy, my name is Stem, and I'm making a farming sim with my partner Stump called Aardvark Agriculture. In this game, you play as an armadillo who's taking over your old boss's farm, which is located in a desert-like biome. You spend your days caring for crops, and when they grow up, you cook your harvest into meals for the nearby town, which happens to be inside the well on your farm. When we first started working on the game, we was actually just me, because Stump was busy with other work. We jointly determined a few simple things, like the setting, a couple of characters, and a vague sense of how we wanted players to progress through the game. But the job of making any of that into an actual playable thing was up to me for the time being. This game is supposed to be small and simple, so I needed to design the world and art style to be something easily manageable for a solo artist like myself. I decided the best way to do that was to make as few unique areas as possible. Creating an entire town that you can walk around is way out of scope. The town, as well as the inside of your house, are going to be illustrated menus, while the exterior of your farm is in 3D. We could have gone with a fully 2D art style, or fully 3D for that matter, but having a mix of both is what I determined to be the happiest middle ground in terms of both time and effort. If the game were in 2D, animating everything would be an absolute nightmare. To get a full range of movement, including diagonals in 2D, you have to redraw the same animation eight times at least per type of movement. At 12 frames a second, just an idle animation means drawing 84 near-identical images. Meanwhile, in 3D, I model it once and I animate it once, and it works perfectly no matter which way you look at it. This means the crops will also have to be in 3D, which is a fair amount more work to model than they would be if they were only illustrations, but that's a price I'm more than willing to pay. On the flip side, if the whole game were 3D, that would mean I would have to draw out detailed concept art for every other area and shop that would show up, and then model it all afterwards. When it's 2D, the modeling step can be skipped altogether. With some sloppy concept art made, I started working on the models for the armadillo and the farm. We wanted the model to be able to curl into a ball and roll around like a slow Sonic the Hedgehog. So to make that work, I made the body and shell as separate meshes, with the shell being split into three parts, a top, a bottom, and a large middle that's made to both flex and better reflect the bands on an armadillo's back. The armadillo is just the right size to be able to almost perfectly curl up into a little ball, and some minor adjustments to the shell parts makes up for any hiccups. The colors were initially supposed to be true to life, but the thing about wild animal coloring is they usually have natural camouflage, which is pretty terrible for the kind of contrast you ideally want to have in a video game. So instead of making the whole screen a muddy mix of yellows and browns all the time, the armadillo was turned purple and pink. When it came to animation, I knew moving between Blender and Godot was probably going to bring up some issues, especially when item interactions got involved. So everything made here was made with the expectation that it would be redone later, once I actually knew what the game requires better. I started with the basics, an idle, walk, roll, dig, and a couple more complex animations for using tools and carrying items just for the sake of testing. There's also a need for blended animations, like if you try digging and walking at the same time, but I skipped those hoping that I'd be able to make something work in-engine through state machines or blend trees. Something important to note is that when I say I'm an animator, I mean that I'm a 2D animator. I'm not completely fresh to 3D, but it has a lot of secrets that it hasn't revealed to me yet. I hardly know what I'm doing with Blender half the time, let alone anything about making stuff function properly in a game engine, and that shows. A prime example is when I tried to animate the armadillo using the watering can in the backpack, where I decided it would be a good idea to animate those in the same animation data as the armadillo. These items are separate objects that are intended to be placed on the farm, not something that comes out and disappears from the character itself when they're needed. This lovely decision led to a debugging nightmare, where every time we tried to look into things later, we'd have to find the issue among 400 error messages corresponding to every single bone in every impacted armature between every single animation. This has been remedied by learning more about Godot's animation tools and manually deleting the problem bones from the editor but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Before any of that happened, I had to remember to turn off pose mode in Blender before I tried exporting my files or else the animations wouldn't work at all in Godot. I didn't actually have that much trouble getting everything in and ready to use. I just think it's funny that it doesn't matter what engine it is, I always screw up the model and animation export tremendously. 
My first priority, once it was set up, was to get the character controller going as well as I could, since I couldn't really test the animations otherwise. I had some previous experience learning Unreal Engine state machine tools, because we'd previously been toying with the idea of using that engine for our projects instead. With that knowledge, I spent a fair amount of time plotting out the general links I wanted the animations to have, first on some sticky notes, and then finally in the actual game engine. Godot has a lot of options for ways you can animate things. Initially, I started with the blend trees and tried operating only in those. Then when I realized the kind of backwards nature of it got to be too much for me, I switched completely into state machines. Finally, I settled on an arrangement that makes its primary use of state machines supplemented by some nested blend trees where they're useful, and that seems to work, but it took me about a week to get it to that point, and it's still a work in progress. Then, once I was finally happy with it, everything connected and transferred right, every state had a clearly defined name, I realized that I had to program it. See, I was still operating on Unreal Engine and Blueprints logic, where the way that you switch things is by doing a couple simple nodes inside the state machine itself, but I was forgetting that even all of that was calling back to and referencing a character controller that I'd already made based on multiple tutorials I watched. I hadn't made a character controller here, and so all that work I did was calling back to a whole lot of nothing. So I went and started looking for tutorials, because even if I couldn't program a lick, I was sure tons of people had plenty of tutorials on YouTube for me to snatch from. Once again, some problems came up. The first was that I was expecting Unreal Engine level tutorials, which are intricately detailed out of pure necessity. Not too many people know how to use blueprints, and they're super weird, so it's necessary to get into the weeds with a tutorial about them. The second problem was that I very quickly realized Godot and the people who develop it and therefore put out the most information about it expect you to already know how to program. Learning how to program from scratch here and now wasn't an option in my mind because I just wanted to make the damn thing move around. This is how I ran into the third problem. As a result of Godot being fairly new and a rapidly evolving engine, most tutorials that I could find were severely out of date. Like if I used code it flat out wouldn't function levels of out of date. This was something I ran into more when I gave up on the character controller out of frustration and was trying to make other things happen instead. Like for instance making it so I could spawn plants and make them grow. I actually kind of got that going, but crucially I could not get both things to happen to the same entity. The absolute mess I made trying that got thrown out with the error-prone animation data much later. In regards to the character controller, the best I had was that after hours of searching, I found a single line of code that would make the character snap in the press direction while walking, but I had no idea how to actually smooth it out. I could press a button to enter the digging state, and a different one to enter the rolling state, but god help you if you wanted to move in those states. I never understood how hard programming was until this point. I thought I'd at least be able to get this one little thing done on my own, but instead I had to ask Stump to take over. I did get to be a little vindicated watching their progress because they couldn't figure out half the stuff I was struggling with either. The mess that I made probably wasn't helping them. But eventually, the armadillo was able to turn smoothly, and after we broke a few hammers trying to beat Godot into submission, it would even move while rolling around. After that whole affair, I limped back to making concept art and assets. And with a newfound appreciation of how hard programming is, I picked up an online Python lesson to boot. This has been a long-winded way of saying that I respect you, programmers. I respect you so much more than ever before. And speaking of programmers, Stump's made some great progress on other parts of the game since then that I'm very excited to share with you next time. Until then, thank you so much for watching.